Hello and welcome to another edition of Sparky Help and this time we're going to be looking at the easy guide to Star and Delta electrical connections. So first of all let's look at the shape of a sine wave for a single phase supply. This time it is one cycle of a 230 volt UK 50 hertz supply, not that, that matters what the frequency is, but you can see that obviously what the shape of the voltage looks like. Why do we need to look at this? Well we need to understand the concepts of a three phase. So on a three phase supply we have three identical sine waves as we can see here L1, L2 and L3 which is the brown, black and grey UK colours and we've got one single sine wave for the L1 and we can see that L2 starts 120 degrees after L1 does and another 120 degrees beyond that we have the start of L3. The reason for this is when generating the coils are displaced by 120 degrees. Therefore the understanding of this is to recognise that it takes time before each one reaches a peak value. Therefore this is why when we do 230 volts and we put it together with another phase of 230 volts, we don't end up with 460. Understanding that they are out of phase of each other by 230 volts, identical sine waves, identical frequencies, will help us to understand how we add them up. So let's look how we add them up. So the best way to do this is we can show this by phaser addition. A phaser addition or a phaser is a representation of the sine waves we were just looking at. So we're going to look at the phaser addition of a 230 volt supply. We're going to draw this to scale using a scale of 1 centimetre equals 20 volts. And in drawing from left to right we can draw to the scale a value, an RMS value of 230 volts. That comes in at 11.5 centimetres. That gives us L1. To add L2 that will be 120 degrees apart and we're going to take the RMS value for that one as well. So that is also 11.5 centimetres in length for L2. How do we add them up? Well because they're out of phase this by doing this method this will take into that consideration the out of phase part and we literally draw a line from one point to the other and if we do that L1 L2 added together is approximately equal to 19.9 centimeters. Why are we doing this? Well for this reason we can just quickly show you what the ratio would be and we can look at it 19.9 divided by 11.5 which are the values that we had on there originally, and that comes to a value of 1.73, or as we will use, root 3. Root 3 is the standard number that is used in three phase installations, which is 1.732, so on and so forth on the calculator, but 1.73 or 1.732 is close enough, but it's the ratio we're interested in. This is not the only way it could be calculated. Here I've got a version that I did, and you can see the one we've just done there, which is that one, as you can see, just pointing towards it. But it could also be done by referring these back to the other side and drawing it this way. And then you add these two up and you can do it by compass. And this value here is the same as that value there. Um, so this is an alternative method just in case you're looking at different different uh, ways of doing it. Uh, the good with the compass method is that if they're out of phase by any other amount, then it also works. So what ways can we connect this up? We can connect in star or Y connection, most commonly known as a star connection, for us anyway. Uh, so how do we connect this up? So here we've got three coils. These could be resistors, they could be capacitors. One end of each is connected to the center point, which is indicated as shown here, and we connect them together. And then the other end of each of them, which I have drawn out in a star connection with 120 degrees apart, uh, but it doesn't have to be, and obviously if you saw these connected you wouldn't necessarily know, you'd have to read the nameplate for something, but it's easier to draw and the representation is easy to see. And then we connect L1, L2 and L3 to it. And it's recognising what the voltages and currents are that we get from each of these. So we have something called the phase current. Well if I said to you first of all, where are the phase windings hopefully everyone would point to what i'm pointing to now it's these things here these are your phase windings so therefore it makes sense then that if the current that would flow in those 
would also be in those windings as well. So we call these the phase currents. And this is showing a current going out, but it could equally be going in, and there would be one in each one. And if this is a balanced load, and a balanced load means that all these coils are identical, which is what you'd probably want, then these values will, will be the same. We've also got something called the line current. So what's the line current? The line current is typically in these lines here, the L1, L2, the, connect, the cables that connect to them. And these are our line currents, at which we will indicate there. And as again, these are fl shown flowing out, and there'd be one in each one as well. Now, if I was to ask you if there was some current flowing here, let's say 5 amps, when it goes around this corner, it will also be 5 amps. So what can we say about that? Well, we can say well, in a star connection that IL equals I phase. Well, you probably think that makes perfect sense, and hopefully it does. And that would be the same for all star connections. That gives us the next one then, the phase voltage. The phase voltage, well again, if I said to you whereabouts are the phases, we would come back to these points here. A voltmeter has two connections. Where do you connect it? Well, one would connect to the end of the winding, the other one connects to the other end of the winding, which in this case is the centre point, the star point. Now, the thing is, people often think, well, it must have a neutral. It doesn't need a neutral. You just need access to this point. I'm not saying you can always get to it. When people make electrical machines, you might not be able to get to that particular point. But on paper, theoretically, we can. So this would indicate the phase voltage. And there would be three of them, but we're talking about equal loads, so they would be the same for each one. So this is V phase, and it's from the end of a winding down to the star point. That leaves us one more to do, and that is the line voltage, VL. And line voltage is a measurement between lines, of which there would be three combinations between L1 and L2, L1 and L3, and L2 and L3. And if hopefully they would all be the same. So there is VL of a particular star connection. The relationship between these is they won't be the same value. Which one will be larger? Well, that will be the VL. It was once pointed out to me, they were, a student told me they remembered it because VL is larger. And in this case, that is true. So how much larger? Well, it's root three. So that root three that we looked at a while ago is VL is equal to V phase times root three. And that would give you the value of this voltage here. So hopefully this is nice and simple and relatively easy to understand. Now let's have a look at a delta connection. So here we have a delta connection. We have three coils again, three identical coils, all connected in a delta connection. And delta being the Greek letter, the capital letter Greek letter, which is a triangle. So hence this is drawn in a triangle shape. But again, in reality, manufacturers when they put it into a machine you wouldn't know it's in a triangle shape because it's not really in a triangle shape they're just connected but it's easier show to representation as we show it here and we've got the connections at each point end of each coil and they take a line off we don't have a center point so even if you wanted to there is nowhere to take a neutral to this anywhere so there is no way a neutral can go to these particular circuits so we need to identify the phase current the phase current again is in the phase windings. So these are windings. So the currents will be in these locations. Current can flow in or out, whether this is a, uh, a load or a generator or some description. So where would they be? Well, we have one phase current there and we have another phase current going there. So we have the phase currents. The line current, where does that go? Well, as before, it goes in the lines itself over here. Or in there, there'll be three of them, and hopefully these would all be balanced loads, so we can recognise that. So there's the line current. What's the relationship between the two? Well, to do that, we need to look in and zoom in on this point at this location. So let's just do that. The current goes in, the current goes in, and a current comes away. Now, if we were earlier on in our career and looking at our knowledge that we'd learnt, Kirchhoff would have told us if we had 10 amps and 10 amps, and he would have said, or you would assume it to be, well, from your knowledge, early knowledge, that that phase plus that phase equals IL, 
and therefore 10 plus 10 is 20. But what we do know is that's wrong. That's not correct. Because remember, these are out of phase. So the actual reason why Kirchhoff has his name associated with this is because he recognised that 10 plus 10 equals 17.32 amps. Oh, where does that 17.32 come from? Oh, it's the root 3. If you're wondering what the lines represent, they represent the phasor sum. So to recognise the fact that they're not literally added, so hence not 20. Something else needs to be done. You need to take in the angle between the two currents into consideration before adding them. We go back to our original drawing on the delta then. So IL is equal to I phase times root 3. That root 3 factor, which we're just going to use from here on in on all calculations where required. V phase. Where's the phase voltage? Well, in order for the measure of voltage, there must be two points. And again, we're going to identify those points. And it's from the one end of the coil in this case to the other end of the coil. That would be the phase voltage. That leaves one more left, and that's the line voltage. Where would the line voltage be measured? Well, it would be between any two lines again, and it could be L1 to L2, L2 to L3, or L1 to L3. And that would be that location there. What can we tell you? Well, if we're measuring the voltage in this location here, if we've moved the arrows up and moved them down, then the difference between V phase and VL is absolutely nothing. Hence, the formula is VL equals VP. So there we have it. These are the star and delta formulas that can be applied to all circuits. Please watch out for my video on star and delta calculations to apply them. Thank you very much.